back to D-Lab, the projects keep on coming in. This time, I've got a blackface Fender Princeton reverb amp. Came here all the way from Hawaii. It needs some major restoration. Let me show you what's going on. And here she is. Let's give the Princeton a look over. See, so we're missing one of the inserts for this knob. But all the knobs are there in original, so that's a good thing. Eyelet board has got the wave going on. A lot of old crusty caps have to come off. Still have the death cap and a two conductor cord. Isn't that lovely? Okay, so that's coming out. There is the original power transformer, and you'll notice that there's a lead pulled. I'm going to show you why. But first, let's take a look topside. Backside of the amp from this angle doesn't look too bad. But as we come across here, you start seeing some issues, like this rectifier tube. Yeah, she lost some vacuum, so unfortunately that guy's history. Now we come around here, and we see we have two filter caps. This is the original, this is the add-on. So if we go underneath, I'll show you how they did that, and then I'll show you what's wrong with that main power transformer. Well, at some time in this amp's past, the main filter cap must have developed an issue. So, somebody got the bright idea to carve a nice hole and add another cap topside. Kind of a bummer, but I can reverse this and make it look acceptable, so I'm not too concerned about that right now. Then we have the power transformer. You see this lead that's disconnected? Well, I did that, and I'll show you why. But the main fault that the owner had was when he had applied power, it would blow fuse immediately. So I figured there's probably something wrong with that transformer. Let's measure it. Alright, so to make a long story short, I hooked the amp up to my Variac because I knew it had a short, brought up the voltage, and was drawing excessive current. So I thought, well, let's measure the high voltage windings here. And if you look... Only got about 44 ohms on that winding. And if we go to ground, that side is 30. That lead is 14. So we've got some internal issues with the power transformer. It's leaking to ground. Those resistances are way off, so the power transformer will have to be replaced. Alright, so the game plan will be we're going to get the power supply repaired first before I start working on the amp section itself. I'm going to pull the transformer. I'm going to pull these two caps. I have a classic tone replacement for the power transformer. I'm going to get fresh caps in there. We'll bring this thing up on a Variac, make sure the power supply is healthy, and move forward with the rest of the amp. Alright, so for the heck of it, let's verify that original power transformer. All the leads are disconnected except for the primary, which is going to my Variac. Variac is in amperage mode. I'm just going to bring up a little bit of voltage. See that current draw? Shouldn't be any current draw because we're not loading the transformer. So yes, it has an internal short and is defective. All right, I got the caps and the transformer removed. I'm not going to stall them at this point because I need to repair this gouged up hole. So I planned to put bias adjustment in this amp, okay? So what I'm gonna do is round that out to where this washer can go into the chassis and I'll solder that into place. And then I have this beautiful Allen Bradley 10K resistor that lined up sitting like this so he can have adjustable bias on the Princeton. Got the hole ready for that washer. So I'm going to clean the bottom side of this thing and get out old Snozoramus to take care of the heavy duty soldering. I've got the amp sitting up on a block and that is keeping the washer level. Clean the area around it. I'm going to come in here with solder and float around that guy. Mount our pot and should be as good as new. Alright well here we go. And we're going to have to have that famous Snozoramus introduction music. Here we are. Let's hit it. Good evening. Sit 
back and relax. Light up an old ghoul. A lot of people wonder where ghouls come from. Well, they come from all over. They have... A lot of ghouls come from Portugal. <laughs> there she is. The new variable bias pot installed. How's she look on the top? Pretty darn good. A lot better than that old gouged hole that used to be there, huh? Well, there's the new filter cap in place, and I've started wiring up the new power transformer. So it won't be long, we'll be able to apply power. All right, I got the power supply wired up. Now we're going to do an initial test. Make sure the high voltage is working. I only have the 5U4 rectifier tube in at this time. No output tubes are installed. I'm using a 25K resistor as a load for the high voltage so that it discharges between testing and I don't get blasted, right? All right, so I'm bringing it up on the Bariac. I'm at 50 volts input right now. You see our high voltage coming up. I'm gonna take it right on up to 100. So there is the new high voltage on the Princeton. So that's good, that's working. Now, let's let that discharge. We're gonna move over and take a look at our negative bias because remember I just added a pot. So I had to rescale that negative bias because now we have the pot in line. I've connected the meter now to look at one of the grid lines going to the output tube so we're looking for negative voltage, same deal. Let me bring up the Variac. And of course this is going to be much faster to come up because it's just going through a diode, right? So the 5U4 really has nothing to do with this. So there is my negative bias. And now I'll adjust the pot. Make sure if I can get my screwdriver on it. There we go, moving the pot around. So negative 48 volts on the high side. Going on to about negative 22. So I'm gonna preset this at about negative 36. Next, I'm gonna get some tubes in this thing and let's see if we can get a signal through it. I've installed a good set of tubes in the Princeton. Got some nice RCAs here for the trial run. Let me get it up on its base, hook up a dummy load, audio generator, and let's see if I can get a signal through it. Got the Princeton fired up, monitoring my negative bias on the output tubes, audio generator connected for my input into a dummy load resistor going to my scope. So there's my volume, you can't hear it, but take a look at the scope. There it is. Nice clean sine wave. The Princeton is working. I wonder, by chance, if the tremolo works. But I don't see any activity on the tremolo function at all. So we probably got other issues on the board. I'm going to recap it anyway. You can see we got a lot of work to do. So all those caps have come out. We'll retest and see if all the functions come to life. Now I do not have the reverb hooked up at this time. We'll test that at the end. Well I've changed out quite a few caps and I thought this would be a good time to re-verify the tremolo operation. I also found many resistors that were way out of tolerance or actually the incorrect ones installed in the tremolo circuit, which is kind of odd. Somebody's doing a little science experiment, I guess. So he'll bring up the uh, volume. There's our signal. Here's my intensity for the tremolo. There's the speed. So it looks like caps and resistors solved that problem. Next step, we're going to get these ceramic disc caps out of the audio chain. I'm going to verify all resistors. Anything out of tolerance will be replaced. And I'm sure these 100Ks are bad. They usually are. All right, we're all set, ready for test. 
obviously changed all those caps and I found many resistors way out of tolerance. Those old 10 percenters, Drift-O-Matic. All right, I have the reverb tank hooked up. I'm gonna get a speaker on this thing. Let's see what it sounds like. All right, guys, here's the deal. Fired up the amp, got on a speaker. I got a little spring lightning storm going on. It's kind of odd. All the components have been changed in the reverb channel, but there's something odd going on now. I've already checked the tubes. I've subbed out the tubes. Still got this little funny crashing noise. Can you hear it? So the volume's all the way down. Reverb all the way down. There should not be any activity on the output of this amp. Bring up the reverb a little bit. So I've already been tapping around. Hear that? It's very random. So here's what I'm thinking. This amp was obviously exposed to moisture. The power transformer was bad. Most resistors were way out of tolerance. So I believe that maybe the reverb transformer itself maybe has a little corrosion in there. Something going on in that reverb transformer. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute it out with another transformer. I could get all scientific and try to measure it and find it, but if this was a bad connection issue, getting in here tapping would excite the problem and it doesn't. So let's just sub out the reverb transformer, see if that solves it. And if it doesn't, I guess D-Lab's got a challenge, doesn't he? All right, so I quickly substituted in an external reverb transformer. Amp is on. No smashy crashies. That's what it is. Internal arcing on the reverb transformer. So put this one in your memory banks, guys. You have some random reverb crashes. It might not be the tank. It might be the reverb transformer. All right, gonna install it. All right, got the new transformer installed. Here is the old one. And right there, you can see evidence of maybe some arcing going on right there on the primary lead going in. Who knows? But either way, there it is. Reverb up. No noise. Now that I have that original reverb driver transformer pulled, give an inspection if you look right there. You can see an arc mark, okay? And looking down in here, I can see some blackness, okay? So I believe that one of the windings has arced to ground. There's a carbon path, probably was exposed to moisture in its past. There's another sign of an arc. So anyway, they're only about 20 bucks a pop, but it is a shame that the original fried. But that's vintage electronics, right? 50 plus years old. Well, let's give that reverb another test. As you know, I don't play, but whatever, okay? Reverb's all the way down. Let's bring it up. thing off the speaker.
All right, this is the test of the Fender Princeton that I recently rebuilt. Okay, so here it is over on the bench, and Tony is going to make sure it works. So this one came from Hawaii. Some macadamia nuts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a good sound of vibrato. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> 